1978. I, I've described it as the year of the AECB's grand adventure because uh, the AECB staff were called upon to go beyond the normal bureaucratic duties of receiving applications and so forth to being a field force when Cosmos 954 crashed to Earth in the Northwest Territories. This satellite had been launched uh, in mid-September 1977, and within a very few weeks, the uh, monitoring system at NORAD had uh, detected that it had got out of control. The Americans, in particular, were concerned that it might crash on their mainland territory. When it happened, on January the 24th, President Carter, at that time, called Prime Minister Trudeau and said, you know, it's crashed, we can help and that unleashed this search and recovery operation for the satellite that became known later as Operation Morning Light. This referred to the fact that the satellite created a very meteorite-type trail as it crossed into the Northwest Territories. It was just before five o'clock in the morning, so it created quite a, a sight, and some people thought it was an aircraft crashing. Since it was a nuclear reactor powered unit. The early concern was that this should be identified, located, and, and appropriate measures taken to prevent radiation exposure. The easiest way to do it in, in the January time, of course, was airborne search. And this involved flying Hercules aircraft with the radiation detectors on board 1,000 feet above the surface. Within a day or two, they spotted some some radioactive debris. And to retrieve this material, it was necessary to send in helicopter-borne crews, people out in the field in minus 40 degrees uh, temperatures with wind chills down to minus 100, searching for these particles and these pieces. They were flying missions 24 hours a day searching for this material. So there we were, it's about 2,000 kilometers between Edmonton and, and this uh, temporary Camp Garland. They had to create a, a landing strip on a lake so that they could fly supplies in and people out and radioactive material out from that location. So the first phase of, of this search and recovery lasted from January the 25th, shall we say, a day or so after the satellite came in until sometime in about mid-April when the ice breaks up. In July, we started up phase two, and phase two was to focus on visiting towns, villages, fishing camps, portage routes, roads, airstrips, we wanted to confirm that we had recovered all the uh, radioactive fragments that we could from inhabited areas. We were spending our days flying into some of the remote communities, dropping off the survey crews and doing ground surveys. We recovered over 3,000 particles, most of which were the size of a grain of pepper. There were some beryllium rods found, and there was a, a small piece that was a very, a very hot piece of the uh, reactor core that was recovered during that time. All the particles that were recovered, they were all cataloged with their longitude and latitude as to where they were found. They were all stored in a steel bunker at the airport uh, in Hay River. And when we were closing up the second phase of the operation in October, uh, Canadian Forces Hercules come in and we loaded the steel bunker right onto the Hercules and it transported the bunker with all the radioactive materials to Winnipeg en route to Whiteshell Nuclear Research Establishment, which is in northern Manitoba. 
It was a milestone for the AECB because um, I think it, it brought out the AECB to the public notice. It was a small organization in the 70s. It was quite an adventure because it put us into something that, that wasn't desk bound. It was, you know, intense. We met a lot of new people, went lots of new places that in normal course of events you'll never get to see. I consider this experience a, a life-changing moment for me. I volunteered to go up to provide administrative support services. I was a secretary at the time. And being involved in the recovery, the search, uh, sparked such an interest that after I came back, I realized I did not want to be a secretary for the rest of my life. I had never flown in a commercial plane. I had never been away from home. And it opened a whole new world for me. And it was the start of a, um, a very successful career at the AECB, at the CNSC.